today I'm going to be talking about the Trasena of Achpu, Hunachpu, okay? So I've been talking about the Popovu, and in the Popovu we have these heroes, and one of the heroes is called Hunachpu. Hunachpu literally means, well, kind of like means one blow gunner, okay? Hun is one. Achpu, that actually splits down to he oh, of. Ach means he of. And then pu is it's a blowgun. Okay? So this is also seen as one hunter or one hero. Okay? And this is what is setting the theme for this 13 day period. The 13 day period begins tomorrow. That's the glyph for the Nawalachpu. Okay? So it's going to begin tomorrow, which is the 6th of October, I think. Something like that. <laughs> okay? So this sets the theme. This is kind of like we can consider this to be the like the Lord of this next 13 days. The theme of this next 13 days. Well, what's Hunachpu about? Hunachpu is the hero, but it also represents the sun. We've been through an interesting cycle recently in that we, were, we started in the Amosh Trasena, and then we went into the Ish Trasena, and then the Kech, and the Kech Trasena is now finishing, and we're going into the Achpu. Okay, so Imosh is like the great ocean. It's like the female egg, the female potential. It's kind of like where everything starts. Ish is the spirit of Mother Earth, okay? So it's kind of like the female potential of the universe was distilled into the spirit of Gaia. It became a conscious self, but possibly without form. That then distills into Kech. Kech is the natural world. Okay, so it's like the mountains and the trees. So we see it kind of like going through nature. But this is very, very feminine. Kech is actually kind of mas masculine. But the interesting thing is, if we imagine that Ish is kind of like the spirit of the earth, the spirit of Mother Earth hiding deep down in the darkness of the earth, it comes up to the surface in Kech, where it manifests as the physical world, and then it keeps going upwards to the sun which is Achpu, it's the solar world, okay? And so we see this progression as we're going through the sequence of the Trasenas, these 13-day periods. So it gives us an idea. Now, in the Popovu, Hunachpu and Shplamkiech go down into the underworld to challenge the lords of death. They want to bring back their father's head because their father, Hun Hunachpu, is stuck down in the underworld. Now, Hun Hunachpu could represent the sun. I was saying that the Popovu also has astronomical elements within it. And so what they're doing, we've got these two twins, Hunachpu and Shplamkiech. Their father was Hun Hunachpu, representing the sun, the upper world. Their mother is Ishkik, who's the daughter of one of the underworld lords. So these twins, they're half underworld, half upper world. They carry a perfect balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And so they are going down to the underworld to go and bring Hun Hunachpu's head, the sun, back to the world. Okay? They're going to raise the sun. They're going to create the first dawn. So it's partly a creation story as well in that way. Now when they go down to the underworld, they start having to face the challenges of the Lords of Death. And as you can imagine, the challenges of the underworld, the challenges of the Lords of Death, those are pretty strong challenges. These are the things that, that prove our worth. Those are the things which bring the hero out of each one of us. Hunachpu, the hero, okay? And so one of the things that I see in this next 13 days is this is all about the quest for the hero within each one of us. 
on the Achpu days, when we're making Achpu days of the ceremony, what we're talking about is divinity. It's the ability to see the divine within ourselves and the divine within each other. It's the ability to engage with that divinity, that highest purpose, that highest self that resides within every one of us, whoever we are. Now, in order to get there, we're going to have to go through some challenges. We're going to have to overco overcome some things, okay? It's kind of like, it doesn't just sort of like drop in our laps. We're going to have to work for it a little bit. So it could represent that the next 13 days are something which is going to put us on our path to engaging with our true self, engaging with our, our highest aspects. But in order to do so, we're going to have to overcome a few things in order to get there. Okay, so we've got 13 days. Um, I think it's a very, very interesting Tracena to follow and to be aware of as you go through the next 13 days. When things start challenging you, when you start facing things that you've not had to face before, when you start having to dig within yourself and like peel away layers to get towards that core, core essence, this is all something which is part of that um, part of that tracena, part of that energy, okay? So there is a great potential for reward through this tracena, but reward comes at a price, okay? So we'll see what's going to go on. So we're going to start on the day one Achpu. That's tomorrow. That's the 6th of October. So it's a great day for ide identifying what is the highest potential that you want to work towards right now, okay? We go through different parts of our life. It's not always the same. Okay, we might always be working in a similar direction, but maybe right now you need to work on that part or that part. So one Achpu gives you the ad ability to identify something new because the one is like a seed. It's like something being newborn. It can also represent the fact that maybe you need a little bit of help with it. Maybe it's a day to go and consult a divination, somebody that can help you, somebody that can see you, somebody, a teacher or something like that, that can put you on that path. Because when we're a seed, we need water and fertilizer and sunlight in order to grow into the potential that that seed contains. So this is the potential to become the hero, the potential to, um, to get in touch with your divine self but sometimes we need a bit of encouragement. Can I really be that bright? Can I really be that shiny? Is this really my true path? Sometimes we need some people to help to mirror these things around us and bring that out of us. It's also a day to decide what's divine and what's not. Achpu shines a bright light, but sometimes we can kind of get a little bit distracted by some things. We see things and we think, hey, that's really, that's really impressive or something. And maybe it's not quite as much as we thought it was. Just make decisions. What's truly in your divine path? What's truly in your divine potential? What's your highest aspect that you can work to? Okay, so some form of meditation, some form of introspection or divination might be something which could be really, really useful for tomorrow to set you on that path. Okay, from I think I'm going to have to move these up a little bit. So, from one Achpu, we're going to go to two Imosh. Okay, so Imosh represents the great ocean. Imosh represents the dream world, and it's our it's our collective consciousness. The number two is duality, it's discernment, it can also be kind of like separation, it can also be lovers and relationships, okay? So we've got a whole bunch of stuff, Imosh represents all sorts of layers as well, okay? But there's a big bit in there about dreaming, about capturing your dream, okay? And here, this too, can be the duality of it as well, it's about looking at both sides of it. One of the things Imosh is said to represent um, the right hemisphere of the brain, the left hand. It's the artistic, expansive side. Okay, and 
when we talk about it representing the dream world, well, the dream world is something which is essential because that's where we need to, to dive into and get our dreams from. But within the dream world, the nightmare also exists as well. Okay, and so the two can be about making choices. I was saying that here we're identifying how we want to pursue our goal of kind of like getting in touch with our highest aspect. Here, this is kind of like choosing your dream. Okay, which dream are you going to follow? And it can be very black and white. The number two can be very black or white. It's like tossing a coin. It's heads or tails. It's black or white. It's yes or no. Okay, this dream or that dream. Okay, it's the discernment between them. Okay, Imosh days are also days when we can, um, like, the connection with the collective consciousness can be very strong on those days. You might want to kind of like, again, take a little bit of private time to yourself to isolate yourself so that you can truly determine what's your dream and what's somebody else's dream. Okay, so you're truly following your own dream. Um, Interestingly enough, Imosh is also is connected to the, the oceans and the lakes and being by the lakes, spending time, if you want to, if you can't work out what's your dream and what's somebody else's, take some time by yourself by the lake, by an ocean, by a large body of water to see what comes to you there, okay? And Imosh days are also great days to disconnect from things like social media because you can get overwhelmed with stuff, okay? From two Imosh, so that's Monday, this is Tuesday, so 6th, 7th, Tuesday the 8th of October. We're going to go into three Ich, okay? Now, this is a really interesting combination because um, I write this Mayan number three as three dots, but there's also a way of doing it with the head of a deity. You'll see it in some of the stellas at some of the sacred sites. Now, the interesting thing is that three is a representation of the wind god, and ik is the wind. And so we have the wind god and the wind together in one place there. And the number three isn't always the most stable of days. And ik can be strong, it can be blustery, it can be very changeable. You know how it is, you kind of like, you don't always know which way the wind is going to blow. And sometimes you think it's going to blow one way, and then just as you're going that way, it changes direction, and you have to change direction as well. It can be unpredictable. So three ik brings those two things together for a strong and possibly unpredictable and possibly unstable day. Now, that doesn't sound like um, a particularly good day, right? Uh, I, I get that, but what do those things teach you? When you have to respond, when you have to think on your feet, this is a trial, this is a challenge. This is all about overcoming the challenges in order to go for what you want. So what we can see within this Tracena so far is that here we've got an idea about what we want to go towards and here we might get kind of like the changes come in. Three Ik is kind of like not necessarily a day where you want to plan too many critical things, okay? Because you might find things changing at a drop of a hat and you might find things way outside of your control happening. And so it's kind of like, right, if the wind is blowing outside very strongly, you might choose to spend your day inside, the number three representing the home okay because that way you can mitigate for the the ill effects of it ik is also about inspiration it's about communication this could be communication within the home and it's also about the inner world listening to your inner voice is a big thing of that the three represents the home of the soul the body it's about not just being within the house but being within the house of the soul and ik communication word okay so listen to yourself so from three ik we'll go to four akhabal okay so four akhabal akhabal akab means 
it kind of means night, it kind of means the dark. Chabal means nightening or darkening, but it's actually the transition between night and day. Akabal is the hour or so before sunrise and the hour or so after sunset, like the dusk, the twilight. And it's not night and it's not day. It's somewhere in between the two. When we see it as the dawn, when we see it as like the pre-dawn sky, what we see is that the new day is coming. The new concept is coming, but it's not here yet. We know that the light of the sun is coming, but the sun is not in the sky. Same as when we see a pregnant woman walking around, we know that she's got a baby growing inside her, but we can't, that baby is not fully in this world yet. It's between the worlds. So Akhabal is about bringing in new life. It's about bringing in new concepts, bringing in the new day. The number four represents the physical plane okay the physical plane of existence it's sunrise midday sunset midnight it's kind of like the cycle of the sun it's north south east and west it's everything that creates our physical domain okay and so we see the number four as representing the material world we see it as representing very much a physical world now it's a bit like when you're building a house, you might get the roof on and the walls up, but do you want to live in it like that? Well, you can live in it like that. It will keep the rain off, it will keep the sun off, but really you'd like some windows and maybe a couch and that kind of thing, okay? So four is not complete, but it's stable enough. It's whole enough. So this, Akhabal, is about a new concept, a new idea, a new birth that you're bringing in. And this is about putting some physical stability to it. Okay, so it's not to say that you've finished the idea. This is kind of like halfway through. You, knew, you know the new day is coming. You know that the light is coming. And you've got some ideas about how you're going to bring it in. But it still needs a lot of fleshing out before it's ready. So this is a great day to look at the way that you want to achieve this and start setting out some physical um, goals or some physical um, uh, supports to this journey. Okay, from four Akhabal, we're going to go to five cat. Okay, one of the ways that we can see this glyph is as a seed which is being planted into the ground. Okay, cat is the net. And you'll see here, like everything's collected in nets. Oranges, avocados, everything. The corn collected in a net, taken down from the field and taken to market. So the net represents gathering of our abundance. It represents harvest. But there's also, it represents planting. It represents the implantation of the fertilized egg into the wall of the womb. Because the net also represents the womb. Okay, so this is a great day for going through your net and sorting out what you want to grow, what has been harvested and what you want to let go of, okay? Cat represents our physical abundance. We might pack our bags before we go on our journey and when we pack our bags we think, well, I'm going to need that and we're going to need that, we're going to need that, we're going to need that. And then after a while you realise, well, actually that's obsolete, I don't need that anymore, so you can release it. But maybe it was given to you by your great-grandma, so you don't want to release it, you've got an attachment to it. At some point, those attachments start slowing us down and we have to learn what to release and what to keep. What's going to sustain our journey towards our greatest self? and what's slowing us down from that journey. Cat, as well as representing the abundance of the net, represents prisons, okay? So when we're making ceremony with cat, we burn these little strings to ask for the release from attachments that we no longer need to carry. Now, chances are that in, li in life we make a lot of attachments. At the point that we make that attachment, it was something that helped us to move forward. It was useful to us. But sometimes we just got to let it go so that we can then move further on. 
it can still be our foundation but we don't want it to be our anchor okay so cat days are great days for looking through our abundance looking through our bags looking through what we're attached to and saying i no longer need that in my life that's slowing me down that i need to keep because that's important so we've got that kind of discernment going on and we have it with the number five the number five the one hand represents work okay so work is the application of energy to a system so it's like putting your energy into working out what you want to take forward and what you want to leave behind what you want to let go of it's not to suggest if it involves work it involves putting energy into it if you're putting energy into it it's not necessarily easy but it's something where you realize yep yeah, okay i've got to put my energy into letting go of what needs to be let go of and keeping what needs to be kept okay so from five cat we go into six can okay can the energy of the serpent the energy of wisdom the energy of the teacher it's also the energy of the kundalini if we want to put it like that it's the creative essence and in um, certain there's a certain uh, mexican codex that shows the position of the nawales on the body and can is seated here over the sacral chakra it's like our creative center where our creative energy essence comes from can is the lightning in the blood the lightning which brings us wisdom. So can represents wisdom, it can represent teachers. It can also represent sexuality. So here, what do we see? Well, can is the, also, when we gain the wisdom, we gain the wisdom to see things as they really are, to see through illusions and that kind of thing. That's what true wisdom brings to us. Can is about power. You know, if we have all of this energy running through us and we use it incorrectly, we might use it for our own empowerment. But as a teacher, teachers empower others through the sharing of wisdom. And that is Can's highest aspect. Okay, so six Can we can see as a day of wisdom. We can see it as a day of seeing through to the truth of the matter rather than seeing the illusions. Um, we can see it as a day of empowerment okay where does that empowerment come from well it's coming from the six so the six there's the four of the physical plane there's the six okay so it's coming from the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth into the physical plane so six can is about gr um, grounding what we could consider be divine wisdom or divine power into the physical plane in order to move on our journey Okay. Six can is going to go to the top at seven came. Okay. Came means death. This death is all about transformation. It's about spiritual transformation. Most of us, like as we go through life, our transformation happens when we leave this mortal body. Kamei gives us an opportunity to continue to go through the evolution of the soul without having to leave the body. It's about facing our fears. I was talking earlier about the hero twins, about them descending to the underworld to face the, the lords of the underworld, who are called the Lords Kamei. And when they face the Lords of the Underworld, they go through a bunch of challenges and are kind of like they, they end up dying and being resurrected as these magical beings. So this is kind of like a massive spiritual transformation that they went through. Interestingly enough, in this Trasena, we have Hun Akpu, who is the hero, and we have Wukub Kamei, who is one of the named Lords of Death. In the Popol Vuh, uh, when the hero twins have been resurrected, they're called to the, uh, the court of Shibalba to make a performance. And that performance is watched by the Lords of Death. 
And at the end of the performance, the two chief lords, they called One Death and Seven Death. They defeat One Death. One Death asks for the, the magic trick of having his head cut off and being resurrected to be performed. So they cut his head off. And then Seven Death says, do me, do me. So they cut his head off, but they don't resurrect either of them. And in that way, the hero twins are victorious over the lords of the underworld. And they bring the light back to the world. They resurrect the head of Hunach Pu back into the world, yeah? Okay, so here we see Seven Death. This is like the pinnacle. This is the top of the pyramid. This is the seven represents death and endings. This is the death of death. This is overcoming the greatest fears. Okay, so in our journey of embracing our inner hero, of getting to our highest divinity, we are going to have to overcome some fears. This is about overcoming the final fear, taking the plunge and saying, right, that's it. I've had enough of being held back by this fear. I've had enough of being held back from my true potential by this fear. It's time to get it over with. It's time to do it. Okay, so this, uh, what's that? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so is it going to be easy? No. If you're facing your greatest fear, do you really think it's going to be easy? But is it going to be productive? Is it going to cause a great transformation? Is it going to bring out your true magical being and bring the light back to your world? Well, possibly. It's a part of the journey that you have to go through. Okay, so that's where that sits. Now, what does that bring about? Well, this is also a very interesting day because from seven Kamei, we move, that's not, maybe I should put it there. All right. Our pyramid's a bit out of alignment. We move into eight kech, okay? Eight kech is a very interesting day. The reason being that it is one of the initiation days and it's said to be one of the initiation days for higher level Mayan priests, okay? Kech represents the wilderness. It represents our ability to walk in the mountains and get messages. When you might ask some of the more advanced spiritual people here about how they do it, like, uh, you know, uh, from, the, from the Mayan people and that, now say, I'll go and talk to the mountain. Okay, they, they, they get their messages from the forest, from the mountains, from nature. And this is how they help to keep harmony within the, within the villages. Okay, so Kech, the natural world, naturally aligns itself with spiritual leadership because when you're integrated with the natural world, when you understand the natural world, you're able to lead your people, you're able to give the good decisions, the best decisions. Okay, and the number eight represents wholeness, it represents understanding the wholeness of the natural world. Eight Kech is used as an initiation day for higher level Mayan priests. And of course, you can only get to that higher level. Here you are, you're starting off looking for your own divinity, as it were. You go through the greatest challenge that you can face, the things that you fear the most, you go through that death of death experience, and the very next day, you're initiated into a higher level spiritual leadership. Okay? So as we see that, this could be a great day to go and take a walk in the woods if you're looking for, you know, guidance. Could be, a, and as I say, this is the day when you might feel like you wake up after this experience that you've gone through on that day, to wake up kind of like feeling empowered the next day, to feeling initiated the next day. But that's taking that step into spiritual leadership there. Okay. From eight kech, we're going to move into nine anil. And this is, you know, some of these over here, they might have seemed like it was going to be a bit, bit tough. And I mean, that one looks really tough, right? But nine anil 
is something which should be a really, really nice day, as it were. Okay, anil is ripening, it's yellowing, it's coming to its maturity, coming to abundance, and it's a joyful day. Okay, when we bring the crops in, we've been laboring for 260 days, hoeing the fields, watering the fields, picking the weeds out, doing all of that kind of thing, and finally we're taking the crops in, we get paid. It's like, okay, okay, this is time to celebrate. So there's a joyful aspect of Kanil that comes in there. And it's the joy about uh, coming to maturity, bringing something to its completion, yeah? And here, it's connected with the number nine. The number nine represents the divine feminine. It also represents life itself. So this might be the completion of a life goal, okay? This is a, a, a great day for kind of like working on those kind of things. On this journey, this kind of like this, uh, the journey to divinity here is coming to fruition. You can start to see it happening. You're bringing it to life. You know, I was saying here, it's kind of like you've got a, like the, the new idea that you're kind of like setting out some ideas into the physical world of how to achieve it. Well, here, this is kind of like, okay, everything's, all systems go. We're wo moving in the right direction and things are beginning to look golden. Okay, so this is a great day to look at the areas that you are maturing within your life, looking at the projects and ideas which are going to take you closer to this maturing of your own divinity. Okay, so we might consider that we're going to receive some things, you know, it's a day of abundance, it's a day of goldenness, it's a joyful day and all that kind of thing, and it's a day where we might receive some things, and when we receive we then have to pay it back, okay? You know, it's kind of like, if that is the initiation of a spiritual leader, for example, well, what's that about? Is that to say, right, okay, now I've got this badge, aren't I great, or something like that? No, what are you gonna do with it? Well, you're gonna serve your community, okay? And Ten Toch is probably about the strongest day of service to the community that we can, we can imagine. Toch, payment we receive there we pay there okay it's giving something back for everything that you've received okay and the number 10 is this it's two hands coming together in agreement in cooperation okay so this represents the agreement of societies this is the the shaking hands on it okay we're making agreements and so here, if we see this as society or community, and this as payment or service. So this is a great day to be organizing um, any form of community action which is going to help to further the community, help to strengthen the community. Toch is saying about putting our personal energy into it. Yeah, This is our form of payment, or making a donation towards it in some way. If we look at our, you know, our money as energy, however we want to look at it, it's kind of like put your energy into the community on Ten Toch, because that's the day. It's also about paying off debts, yeah? We get a lot from our communities, our communities sustain us. This is an opportunity to give something back. And when we give that back, it frees us of any burdens of like any of those little debts that we'd forgotten that we'd got or something like that. It frees us of that on the Ten Toch day. Okay. So. From Ten Toch, we're going to go into 11 C. So C is in the world of faith and loyalty and justice and law. Okay, I was saying, how this is kind of like the Nawal of policemen and lawyers and judges and like guides within society and that kind of thing. But it's um, also about our own faith, our own loyalty, justice towards ourselves, justice towards kind of like our growth potential and what we might become. Okay, so there's a lot of guidance that goes on through Z. Z is said to bring keen senses, we kind of like feel what's going on. It can, so it can be a very um, sensitive day. 
Z is also, it has a very colourful side as well because just as it represents uh, faith and loyalty, it can represent infidelity as well. Um, and most of that is because it's a very sensual day. It's a very sensual Nawal to carry. Its senses are what guides it. Its senses are one of its greatest um, um, benefits that it, it carries with it. But sometimes it, it likes its senses stimulated. Okay, so this can be a very stimulating day as well. The number 11, number 11 is a high number it's an odd number and it can be very creative but it can sometimes lack direction it can sometimes feel like doing that it's kind of like looking at things from many many points of view collecting many different experiences so this could be the 11 t could represent many different experiences that bring you faith in your journey, faith in yourself. It might be a day when you really have to look outside of the box to find out what your, where your journey's going. It may also be a day where you just have to trust that you're going in the right direction, okay? It might not necessarily make sense. The thing about an 11 is that whilst I showed it described like that, when you're on an 11, it's like you're on that rocket, okay? And as far as you're con concerned, you're going forwards. And you're going forwards with great strength. So, often on like 11 days, we might not really know why we're going in that direction. We just feel a, an urge that we have to go in a particular direction. And here, this is kind of like saying that you may find your faith in that direction. You may just have to have faith that you're doing the right thing, that you're going in the right direction, even if it doesn't seem to make sense with the last direction that you were going in because it seems to be at a right angle. Okay? From 11 C, we're going to go to 12 bats. Now, as I was saying, we're starting to get some really nice now while it's coming in there. 12 bats is certainly one of them. Bats is our creativity. It's our creative essence. Bats is the weaver. It's about like all art in one way or another could be seen as weaving. We might be weaving notes together to make music or words together to make poetry or colors together to make a picture or we might literally be weaving threads together to make a beautiful cloth, beautiful tapestry. So that's what Bats is doing. Sometimes I feel kind of like if we like our understanding of Bats is like we are here on this earth as emanations of the divine bats is connecting us with the creative aspect of the divine and so when we allow our creativity to flow in that way we create beauty into the world this is why you know certain great works of art or great works of literature are very very bats they're very kind of like they are literally the projection of divinity into this world okay and this gives us our ability to connect with that so if you've got an art project or something like that bats days are the days when you can really let it flow really get it out there it's like you are the energy of the day is all about creativity and art and beauty and so you're connecting with that energy now the number 12 represents bringing together all of your life experiences okay so when we see 12 bats this is about creating through your life experience. So it's about that artwork that you saw 15 years ago that really inspired you. It's about that piece of music that you knew as a kid or that book that you read five years ago that made you take a journey. All of those things coming together in order for you to create something which is unique, something which is beautiful and something that is yours. Okay, so it's kind of like gives us that ability to use our kind of like retrospective um, look at what we can bring forward in order to create into our future, in order to create into our now. How we can create beauty through what we learn and through our experience. And then we're finally going to end up here. The final destination in the Akhpu Trasena is 13 E. E is the path, is the journey. 
Ech days are often good days to make physical journeys on, good days to travel, depending on the number and that. And we're all on journeys, right? We might be on our physical journey, we might be moving around however, but we're also on our spiritual journey, we're on a journey through life. That's what we're doing, we're all travellers in one way or another. Thirteen represents the spirit world and it represents the ancestors. So when we see spirit world and journey or spirit path, this is the day about working out about your spiritual path, okay? 13 days, these are the days when all the energy is activated in our joints. 13 days, the spirit world is close on 13 days, the ancestors are close on 13 days. If you ever wanted to find out about your spiritual path, 13 Ech is the day to go and get a divination, go and get a reading, go and do something like that to find out about your spiritual path, yeah? And if we look at it from the perspective of beginning with Kunach Pu, we're going to end up with the journey of the ancestors. Okay, so it's a, you know, it's a, a great day to finish on. I think 13 Ech is always a very, very important and interesting day. And um, as I say, great day for a divination if you're still looking, but that surely has got to be our destination. It's kind of like the path, to, the path of the ancestors. We can see that ahead of us. Okay, and so that will be, um, that will be in like uh, 13 days time, 17th of October. Okay, so there you go. You're welcome.